so you go to bed at 10 p.m. because you have to get up early in the morning. And then you start staring at the ceiling for an hour. Then the hour turns to two, then three, then five. And then you're frustrated because you know you won't be well rested in the morning and you'll, you'll dread getting up in the morning. So um, sleep is very important to everyone. And um, without it, you can feel like you're not living up to your fullest potential and can um, want to like take a nap in the day. <laughs> so um, without sleep, you can experience um, physical and social functioning and increased frustration, and it could cause um, an effect on your emotional health. Um, I know when I don't get a good night's rest, I can get noise annoyed easily, and I can regret going to pu public places that require me to interact with people. Um, the purpose of my speech is to inform y'all of the effect that sleep deprivation has on you and the, um, the effect that it has on your brain and your body's functioning. Um, have you ever experienced a dreadful sleepless night? Um, according to the National, I mean, according to the Association of Insomnia, insomnia is a irregular circadian rhythm or a sleep-wake cycle. And um, moving to like the types of insomnia, transient insomnia, they usually depend on like the like the time of what you have sleep deprivation, and um, this could last a day, to a week, or two weeks. So it usually depends on your um, stress at like work or school, um, family issues, or high full arousal upon trying to go to sleep, which is like excitement or or stress. Um, and then another for the people who are very unfortunate and have chronic insomnia, it is a like a long term sleep deprivation. So it usually has to do with um, diseases to vital bar body systems or like unsolvable um, medical issues mm. which causes them to um, be uncomfortable upon going to sleep. Um, so I talked about the different types of insomnia and now I will get into the treatments. So the treatments of insomnia of course would be a sleep aid but for those who don't want to rely on drugs to get adequate sleep, they can um, try these treatments. So one treatment would be um, um, relaxing training, which is like calming the body. It includes like breathing exercises and meditation, guided imagery, just to like calm yourself and like make sure you're gonna go to sleep in a peaceful mindset. And then. According to the National Sleep Foundation in 2015, the most um, impactful way to get adequate sleep would be um, CBT or cognitive um, behavioral therapy, which um, requires you to go to sleep and wake up at the same times consistently and, um, and just have a positive like, aspect of sleep in your mind and it eliminate the fear that you have in not getting enough sleep. Um, these treatments have to be done consistently though, or else they will not work. So yeah, okay, moving on. Moving on to the effects on the brain. So there are three main neurotransmitters that are um, minimally like secreted when you're sleeping, which is acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. So when you wake, you release these neurotransmitters at high levels because when you have a good night to s good night's rest, you um, you replenish these neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. So acetylcholine um, mostly has to do with like your muscle movement. So this like the lack of acetylcholine in your system would be um, due to an, an adequate amount of sleep. Mm -hmm. Would it be um, impaired motor functions and slower growth in tissue repair? Non-epinephrine promotes regulation in blood pressure, um, glucose, and T cell T cells, which is like part of the immune system. So um, 
you can experience an increase in blood pressure, um, insulin resistance, and your immune system may be vulnerable, making you more prone to catch a cold or develop an infection. Acetylcholine regulates your mood. So without this, you may experience like symptoms of depression and also like just not being positive in your everyday life. Like, um, in conclusion, being deprived, of, being deprived of sleep can be very painful to go through, but there are, there are various outlets to ensure that you get an adequate amount of sleep. First, I talked about um, the tr the first I talked about the types of insomnia depending on the severity of sleep deprivation. Then I talked about the treatments to gain an adequate amount of sleep, and then I um, <coughs> and then I explained the the problems that it has on your brain's um, functioning of your neuromodulatory transitions. Um, so. One out of three people experience symptoms of insomnia, but six to ten percent of those people actually have the disorder. So if you know someone who struggles with gaining adequate amount of sleep, make sure they know that they can get help, and it's also very important for them to get help for their mental and physical needs.